This morning's Mass is being offered for Roy Humbert. Our entrance antiphon, O God, when you went forth before your people, marching with them and living among them, the earth trembled, heavens poured down rain, Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. So ordinarily, uh, we would be celebrating the ascension of our Lord. Uh, This is 40 days after Easter, uh, but that celebration is transferred to this Sunday in this diocese. So today we just have Thursday. So my brothers and sisters, in order to celebrate uh, these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins and that the mercies of the Lord are new every morning. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who made your people partakers in your redemption, Grant, we pray, that we may perpetually render thanks for the resurrection of the Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. There he met a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had ordered that all Jews uh, ordered all the Jews to leave Rome. He went to visit them, and because he practiced the same trade, stayed with them and worked, for they were tent makers by trade. Every Sabbath he entered into discussions with the synagogue, attempting to convince both Jews and Greeks. When Silas and Timothy came down from Macedonia, Paul began to occupy himself totally with preaching the word testifying to the Jews that the Christ was Jesus. When they opposed him and reviled him, he shook out his garments and said to them, Your blood be on your, he- your heads. I am clear of responsibility. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. So he left there and went to a house belonging to a man named Titus Eustus, a worshiper of God. His house was next to a synagogue. Crispus, the synagogue official, came to believe in the Lord, along with his entire household, and many of the Corinthians who had believed, who heard, believed, and were baptized. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done wondrous deeds. His right hand has won victory for him, his holy arm. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. The Lord has made his salvation known in the sight of the nations. He has revealed his justice. He has remembered his kindness and his faithfulness toward the house of Israel. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation by our God. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Break into song. Sing praise. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. I will not leave you orphans, says the Lord. I will come back to you, and your hearts will rejoice. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, A little while, and you will no longer see me, and again a little while later, and you will see me. Some of his disciples said to one another, What does this mean that he is saying to us, A little while, and you will not see me, and again a little while, and you will see me, and because I am going to the Father. So they said, What is this little while of which he speaks? We do not know what he means. Jesus knew what they wanted to, knew that they wanted to ask him, so he said to them, Are you discussing with one another what I said? A little while, and you will not see me, and again a little while, and you will see me? Amen, amen, I say to you, you will weep and mourn, 
While the world rejoices, you will grieve, but your grief will become joy. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, what struck me the most, so we're preparing for the ascension. We're preparing for Pentecost, ascending of the Holy Spirit. And what does the Holy Spirit equip us to do but to go out and proclaim the gospel? And that's exactly what Paul is doing as he goes to Corinth in the Acts of the Apostles. And I was sitting there, well, last night when I was preparing, um, I was sitting there and I was thinking, what would that look like? It just seems like whenever we encounter Paul or the early disciples, they're just always preaching the gospel. They're always preaching the good news about Jesus Christ. They're always um, speaking about his name. And I just think, are they really just like going up in people's face and like starting arguments or starting conversations? I wonder what that does look like. I honest to goodness do. Um, it's, it's just, I think it's fruitful to meditate on because if that's what they were doing, then that's instructive for us. It's normative for what um, any Christian ought to be doing. Proclaiming the gospel to the ends of the earth, no matter what the cost. And when anything gets in the way of that, we Christians would naturally fight against that. We have from, from the beginning, since the governor, uh, government uh, put our Savior on the cross, um, we've um, fought against anyone who stands in the way of our ability to preach the gospel. So as, uh, as, uh, as a church, we've been around for 2,000 years and we'll be around until the end of time. Um, we have fancy buildings now. We may not always have them, um, but such is life. And uh, yeah, it's just interesting as you go through um, church history and church documents. Um, you know, it took the church a long time to, um, what would you say, uh, what do you want to say, like denounce um, a lot of heresies throughout the uh, course of church history. Um, but the one, one uh, so for example, um, Arianism took a long time for the church to uh, pronounce on. Uh, Mormonism took a long time, I think Mormonism took, um, yeah, I think that took about 150 years before the church condemned Mormonism, maybe a little bit more. Um, but it took about three months for the church to condemn socialism. Um, socialism is one of the greatest threats to our dignity as human persons, as our dignity as a Christian, and so the church is going to be very quick to denounce and condemn socialism. And what is socialism? It's basically when the state decides um, what man can do, what we can do, what we can choose, where we can work. Um, and that's not okay because we are created by God with certain um, uh, dignities. Just by the very fact that we are made in his image and likeness, we have an inestimable dignity. What does it mean that we are made in his image and likeness? that we can know we have an intellect and we have a will. We can choose the good so we can know the good and we can choose the good. And that's um, a very good thing. That's how we can grow in virtue or we can grow in vice if we choose um, the bad as well. But that's how we become the people that God made us to be. That we can think, we can know him, and we can choose him freely. We can choose him freely. And when anyone stands in the way of that, it is our duty, it's our obligation as Christians to stand up against that person. And even as Americans, um, as part of our Constitution, it's part of, um, it's declared in our Declaration of Independence, and it's enshrined in our Constitution in the First Amendment, uh, the free exercise of religion. So, as you may know, it's on the front page of the Star Tribune, Archbishop Hebda and the bishops of Minnesota, and then there's a small Lutheran um, group as well that is combined with us. Um, we are fighting against Governor Walsh and um, his, um, I, don't un his, I don't understand how he's declaring some things essential and non-essential. It's been very um, not clear, I think, to us, and uh, that's not fair. Um, so I'm very proud of Archbishop Hebda for leading the troops. And uh, so what can we do? So again, we exist as Christians to proclaim the gospel. Our duty, our role, our obligation, the thing by which we will be most judged on our day of judgment is how did we proclaim the gospel? How did we live the gospel? 
How do we, if Jesus really died for us, are we sharing that? Are we living our lives completely for that? And so as Christians, we want to um, have that free exercise thereof to live our religion and to, to proclaim it. So please, I beg you, fellow uh, St. Stephen's, pray for Archbishop Hebda. Pray that he may remain faithful in this uh, task. It's always been the, it's really not anything new. It's um, actually very exciting that church history is actually happening again. <laughs> um, so that's kind of fun. It's no longer just a textbook. It's actually uh, Wednesday, May 20th, 2020 news. Um, it's in the paper this morning on Thursday, May 21st, but anyway, it happened yesterday. Um, so please pray for Archbishop Hebda, fast for him if you are able, um, offer up sacrifices for him um, that he may be strong. Um, he is an incredibly intelligent man, zealous man, faith, faith-filled man. Um, so please pray for um, our Archbishop Hebda. Please pray for Governor Walls. Um, I don't know where he is at with the Lord, but um, I hope that he knows our Lord very intimately. I pray for his conversion every day. Um, and uh, yeah, pray for our country. It's, it's unnerving how many rights uh, God-given and constitutionally given to us that are just being stripped away and people are just kind of lying down to take it. Um, that's very unnerving. So please pray for our country as well, that we may stand up for our God-given and constitutionally given rights. Um, and you know, I have my, my little pocket-sized constitution here. It's, uh, we have all this free time in quarantine. The Constitution's only 34 pages, and look how little they are. It's barely wider than my hand. It's actually not wider than my hand at all. Um, so you can read the Constitution as well. Um, not too long, again. Very uh, informative in these times. Um, again, God created us in his own image to know him, to love him. We have intellect and will. We can know the good and we can choose the good. And we want to do that so we can spread the gospel to the ends of the earth. May God bless you and pray for our country. Pray for our Archbishop leading this way. Turning to our Heavenly Father, we present him these are needs. And we pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and our Archbishop Bernard Hebda and all bishops of Minnesota and all bishops of this country as well, that they may have the fortitude, the gift of perseverance, uh, to be zealous and stand and fight for our Lord and our God-given right to worship him and our constitutional right to freely exercise our religion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the conversion of um, all elected officials. We pray for uh, President Trump. We pray for Governor Walz and all elected officials that they may know the Lord intimately and may allow us to worship the Lord freely in this country so that we may become the men and women that God created us to be and lead to a life of flourishing in this country. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pray for all those who are sick, those who are suffering, and those who feel most alone and abandoned. We pray for those who do have COVID-19 and who are suffering tremendously from it. Uh, we pray for the families who are not able to be with their loved ones who are suffering in, in various ways. Pray that they may have the grace of trust. And we pray for all those who are in nursing homes and who are not able to be with their loved ones. And for all those who feel a particular isolation in this time. Pray that they may know the closeness of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for many men and women to stand up and fight for our God-given rights and our constitutionally given rights in this country. May it be peaceful, may it be uh, constructive, and may it be done for the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for an increase of vocations to the priesthood, religious life, and diaconate, especially from our own parish. And we pray for Bill Dufford as he prepares for diaconate ordination this Saturday. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for all those who have died, those who will die today, that they may sleep in the peace of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, you hear the prayers of all your children, those that we uh, have spoken and those that we hold in the silence of our hearts. Please answer them all according to your will, for we make them all through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit, God, for the sake of pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, Lord, from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sitting down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, Andrew, his auxiliary, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. <clears throat> Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, 
O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our spiritual communion prayer, my Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life and the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this paschal sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, and you will see in the paper today that um, you probably heard on the news last night too, um, churches are um, able to open, um, I think it's Monday, May 26th, um, so I don't know if we will. Um, I don't know if we are ready for that. But who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Um, so please pray for Father Bennett. Please pray for us uh, who are working here. Uh, we would love to make that a reality. But we also need to um, keep everybody safe. Um, so please, uh, you know, we don't know. 
So I'm just saying that. So you'll see that date. Um, hopefully we will be ready. Uh, but if not, we will get ready as soon as we can. We're already working on some things, but um, basically there are so many unknowns about um, this thing. Um, so we just want to be best prepared as possible. So please pray for us that we would um, have that readiness and have that um, zealousness here as well. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go, go forth and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.